Hello everyone and welcome to Shonen Archive, technically a .5 episode. I'm Wookie and I'm here with Zenron. I am here. Hello. Yes. And previously on Shonen Archive, um, Zen had to go away at the beginning of explaining episode 24. And he was not able, due to cats, which by the way, people are, at, there were some people going like, you can't leave us on a cliffhanger in terms of the cats. So if you want to very give a quick update on okay. the saving the cats, uh, so you the, can do that as well. The, there are four cats in my bathroom. They are mm-hmm. babies about seven to eight weeks old in that general area. Um, <clears throat> they are loud and they fuck the shit up out of my, my entire bathroom. It's just covered <laughs> in shit all the time. One time, literally, because they got in it and ran all over the place and left little shit footprints everywhere that we had to clean yeah. up. Perfect. Um, and they're cute. Three yeah. of them have names. One of them does not have a name. And that's only because the one that doesn't have the name is the one that I'm contemplating arguing we should keep. And if I give it a name, I won't let it leave. So the other ones have names and I don't care. Like, just take them. But uh, <laughs> That's the one. There's- <laughs> yeah, the one that doesn't have a name is the one that I know I will not let out of my sight if I name Cat it. With no so. name. It's tough, man. As someone who's also uh, in our in the past with my family, we've taken care of kittens, and that urge when you have to actually give them away <sighs> after you've basically like raised them and helped helped them out for like <laughs> this tiny period, it's like I don't actually want to get rid of you now. <laughs> this sucks. Yeah, like. Uh... For most of them, we're we're okay, I think, because it's just the 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 logical brain takes over after a while, and you're like, we don't have the spare money to raise four fucking cats. We don't even have the space to raise four cats. Like it's not possible. But yeah, one cat, that's doable. <laughs> and then it diff- starts becoming a problem. It does. <laughs> it's tough, yeah. and I don't blame you. Shit is hard to raise a pet, and they don't make it easy on you, especially the. And we animals. already have two dogs and shit, and it's like fuck. And like, <laughs> we uh we gave them flea baths yesterday because we were worried. Well, okay, we gave them baths the first time because they were nasty, uh, and then we found like a couple fleas, like two, I think, not very many. So we wanted to give them a second round of baths. <clears throat> so day two, we bathed them again, and I was drying off the one that I may want to keep. And I was like cradling it. You know, you have to burrito a baby cat. So it won't like try to run away. Yes. Uh, I had it like that and I was drying it off and I was drying its stomach and it like rolled in my arms, like to present its stomach for belly rubs. And I was like, (laughs) God damn it. This fucking animal. This is how you took an animal. This is how you took over Uh, Egypt. This is how you got an entire. This is how, (laughs) this is how. Yeah cats they are uh something else i i was about to give into a cat story but now we have to actually legitimately talk about these episodes <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> so talking... no cats in this episode of gintama no unfortunately no so episode 24 just to give a quick that was a previously on let's continue on forward um episode 24 is the episode in which uh gintoki is taken away to work in a bar of of men who like to well, I forget, there's a very specific word for what they are in japan so forgive me if i'm not okama bar i believe that is what they're called right uh you're asking me like i know well to be fair whenever there's a japanese word you usually are the one to tell me like actually it's this okama here. is apparently a slang term for homosexuality in japan Ah, uh, damn it, then I don't know if that's the correct word. Let's just go with a bar of uh, men who enjoy being women or are women. <laughs> Let's go with that, huh? <clears throat> but it is that bar. Yeah, well, uh, hang on, I'm going to Google it, because now I'm curious. Yeah, because I've seen these type of bars in, like, the Yakuza games, where the the oh, man oh, behind oh, it... Oh. Onanoko clubs. Onanoko clubs. Okay, so it's very similar to those. Because I remember, in, again, the Yakuza games, which are my only real look into the culture of Japan. <laughs> there's pl- there's a bar <laughs> with them in there. And Kiryu is always just like, ah, yes. And he you know says correctly, like, thank you, ma'am, and stuff like that. So I'm like, I guess this is just something that dudes go to in Japan <laughs> to have a drink and have a fun time, and which they do in this episode. So, well, some of them try and do. Uh, so yeah, we explained that episode in the previous, so if you want to see the synopsis, you can see me and Zen, uh, before he gets taken away, explain it. Um, how'd you end up feeling about it, though? We never, we got my feelings on it, which is that I generally uh-huh. liked it, and it was a very actual, it's a very hard topic to talk about, and also, like, do correctly, and this was released in, like, 2006, maybe? 
that sums up most of my thoughts on it too is that for something in 2006 yeah i really expected the butt of the joke to be haha this guy dresses like a lady what a weirdo yeah. um and it wasn't at all which i really oh. appreciated like i'm not part of that subculture so like it doesn't it doesn't resonate with me like i i guess it might i i see i feel weird saying that because i yeah, don't know see, if it yeah, does see, to, we're, we're, with we're, anyone yeah yeah I, 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 I'm it's like the use, it's this. like the use case thing with like the 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 thing where he's like talking to the person who who's like trans identifying and mm-hmm. some people think it's great because he doesn't treat them weird about it and some people think it's awful because he's so crass about it and it's yeah. like I don't know and I don't want to assign like a value to this episode as if it means something to me on a personal level because no. it doesn't and I don't know what it means to anyone that it may have interacted with. Mm-hmm. But for something in 2006, I definitely expected them to be the butt of the joke, and they were not at all. It was like super respectful and talked yeah. about like it was a, a nice little story just about like people can like whatever they want, and they're still like good people, and yeah. like don't judge people that you don't know because you and don't both- know shit about them. Exactly. And the boy's lesson at the end isn't that, like, I have a father who is a mother or my mother is my father. He just goes, okay, this person is my mother and my father, and I accept that. And it was, like, the most, like, wow, what? (laughs) There was no, like... (laughs) Yeah, and, like, even from the beginning, there's no point where it's, like... Because they set it up at first, um, where they're, like... They are calling him first. Uh oh. He doesn't want his dad to come to the parent teacher conference, so he might be ashamed of him, or he's going to be like, I don't want kids to bully me. And that's even what one of the characters thinks he's going to say. And the kid says, like, no, it's not that. It's just, I don't want them to be mean to him. Yeah. And I was like, God damn. Why are you doing this? You shouldn't be doing this. Yeah. You're Gintama. You're supposed to be stupid fart jokes. Why You're are you being be like, like some nut joke touching. from far away? And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's, yeah. It's the very interesting thing about uh, Gintama is that it, it has so many. Like I said, in, like in the Cap episode with the handful of nuts, a full on display of that. And then they can have an episode like this where it's kind of like, yeah, man. <laughs> Just like it hits the right emotional beats and you go. Even if, like you said, it doesn't really hit us in the same level as it would for someone who would be like that, and we can't really speak to that, I still feel like there was uh, the emotion of uh, arc of what these characters go through is still pretty solid, and what they learn from it is pretty good. Like, even the the one side jokes are usually either they get beat up or their characters are just immediately, like, shut up to the person. Like, even Prince Hata, he, like, has no problem just accepting Paco as a woman. He's like, no, you're supposed to just be right to all women. <laughs> I don't know who yeah, raised see, like, you. A- but... Every character doesn't, really, like, make a big... Except for the two shithead kids yeah. who are, from the beginning, uh, billed as shithead kids. Yeah. So it's like, they're, they're never, like, given any sort of attention to it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, yeah, that, uh, that was this episode. And then I did like it when... Uh, uh, the reveal of Saigo was actually this <laughs> great war hero, and he just completely fucks up that the the Amano so easily. <laughs> yeah, <It's> pretty great. <laughs> he just runs around like he he fought until his loincloth was stained red with blood. Yeah, real good. <laughs> uh, and then at the end of this one, uh, like I said, the end bit is them wearing the samurai thing. Uh, they talk about uh, Gintama's been renewed for a third season. At least that's what it said on the uh, Crunchyroll thing. And the only reason I bring it up is because it actually goes into episode 25. So that... Oh, was... really? Yeah, so the the ending of... The ending bit where they're looking at the, the house, and you know it's just a, a, a nighttime shot of the house, that's how episode 25 starts. So it's literally oh, a lead into that. That is, isn't it? That's yeah. funny. Yeah, there's a lot of like, there's a lot of things going on. So episode 25, I'll let you explain it because I think I did a very bad job explaining it because I was like freaking out. So why don't you tell us very quickly what happened in episode 25? Because it's so easy to explain what happens. So episode 25 is, uh, it's effectively a bottle episode. Um, and they're eating a, I don't remember the exact type of it, but it's a hot pot. I don't know the exact term i don't know the nabe is that what it is nabe was the thing that they wanted yes because they wanted to be the nabe shogun and the napoleon right but yeah i think i think nabe is the type of dish that they were 
yeah, sharing the super expensive um, meat. Well, the meat was beef, but I think the whole thing is called an abe. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, like the mixture in the hot pot that you all eat out of like that. Yes, yes. Um, and they uh, wanted to have like a nabe get together. It's like a celebration kind of thing. And it devolves into like psychological battles <laughs> over um, trying to get it. And it's in and, the exact same way as Death Note. <laughs> yeah, it's a Death Note parody. The whole episode is a Death Note parody. And it's fucking hilarious. It is. And it's constantly like... It, it it's one of my favorite episodes the series has ever done so far yes uh, th- this is the episode i've been wanting to talk about with you for so long it's so fucking funny it is continue uh yeah well they they fight over it and uh kagura sneezes all over the pot so that they won't eat it and then she drinks it and then uh Gintoki reveals in like a death with like a death note face that it was actually pork and not beef that was in that first pot because it was too expensive to get beef. And then uh he treats this Atose as like comes. shattering news, by the way. Yeah, yeah. She, Kagura she th- like passes she, out. Yeah, she thinks that he's been lying to her her entire life. Like at this point she had always believed him, and now that she's <laughs> he's finally lied to her, <laughs> that she's like, Yeah, I don't she's think like I can- my whole life is a lie. <laughs> And fades, and that's the end of round one. And then Natasha and Catherine come in. Yeah, and they they bring actual beef, um, and they make another one. And so they kind of do the same thing, and it's like him and Shinpachi like try to get in there, and then they both knock them out of the way and start grabbing all of the beef in like the slow mo anime action scene, like demons and, uh, almost. Yeah, they look like like traditional oni depictions as they're like ripping all of the um all the meat out of this pot Mm -hmm. and then they have like this last minute heroic comeback where they block the chopsticks with their own so that kagura can drink the pot again yeah and she drinks the entire thing Uh uh-huh and she drinks the entire thing again and then she goes uh i didn't really like it yeah she thought i like the the cheap stuff (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Also, I like uh, the the first time it was the Nave Shogun that they wanted to become, yes. and the second time it was Nabolian. Yeah, Nabolian, the Emperor Nabolian. of Robots. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> and then the episode ends as is ending. There's like a cameo by Ryuk at the end, just to really yeah, let you know. Yeah, he's just on the roof. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he says all humans are worthless, and it ends. And then I think at the end it says, "Hey, go support Death Note." <laughs> Just to let you really know what this was about. Um, and then uh, there's a Naruto reference in this too, where um, after Gintoki reveals, or it's revealed that he lied, he gives Kagura the Itachi speech. Oh, he does. That's right. yeah. <laughs> he gives her the Itachi that. speech. <laughs> Oh man, that's right. That's a good attitude. You should hate me more, curse me more, yeah. test me. You should take the power of that hatred and use it to survive this rotten world. Yeah, after he lies about the meat. Oh fuck, man, this episode is so good. It's so good. It's crazy how good it is. It's so like <laughs> okay. We can both agree. We both love Death Note, right? Yes, Death Note is fantastic. And the anime adaptation is fantastic of it. And the funniest thing about it is making fun of the way that they talk in Death Note. And the super high... Like, you've seen, at this point, if you're you on Twitter, you've seen people make fun of those specific scenes and make it as ridiculous as possible because there's something yeah, inherently funny. Yeah, like the, like the potato chip scene. There's something, like, inherently funny when he slow-mo is like, I'll take a potato chip and, and eat, eat it. it. Yes. And he like bites it and it's like a freeze frame oh, of like oh, a slow-mo freeze frame. He, oh, oh. All this yeah, and it's playing that music the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, so oh. fucking funny. <laughs> There's it's it's dramatic too. it's selling it so well. It's such a good adaptation of how do you make an anime an anime based off of Death Note that is so much intrigue. And it's that way of doing it is so brilliant because it actually leads to it, it can be both dramatic and also hilarious at the same time and it works perfectly. And so Yeah, well doing, because like there there's 
at some level, Death Note is silly. Yes. And you have to treat it that way. And mm-hmm. the anime does such a good job. Mm-hmm. So them doing a parody of what specifically, not just of Death Note in general, because the easy thing would just be like, ah, yeah, we have the Death Note, but actually doing it of the anime and the style of it is, is super funny. And then, like you said, they also sneak in the Itachi one, which I fucking forgot, which is also hilarious yeah, when he does it. Yeah, it's so fucking funny, because it's just a slow-mo, like, black zoom-in of his face yeah. giving the Itachi speech. Uh, but, th- but the other good thing is that, like, in the beginning of the episode, there's, like, I want to say almost, like, four minutes of a blank screen of just, like, a still shot of them arguing with each other. That's where the- they talk about Jackie Chan. They should get Jackie Chan to go in there. Um, and then they play the new OP, and then when they come in, they're still on the still shot, so that makes it seem like they don't have a lot of money to celebrate. And then their celebration episode is a bunch of Death Note still shots. <laughs> So it leads it to it so perfectly. Um, so good. I think they also say, like, when they play the new OP, it also makes it seem like they maybe spent all the money on the new OP and the new ED. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, but another good thing, because at some point, uh, Katsura and Elizabeth show up, and I want to say Elizabeth also when it, they're doing the Death Note stuff, they're putting up little signs. To, to Yeah, to, they are. <laughs> A little written signs. Yeah, and then when um, Katsura first shows up, like, they do the Gintoki inside uh, his mind is like, Zura's here. And then they go inside his mind and he goes like, it's not Zura, it's Katsura. Yeah, it's Katsura. <laughs> he's just thinking it in response. Yeah, he's just thinking it in response because he already <laughs> knew. Uh, there's also Fucking some... Good. Yeah, so good. There's also when he's, like, in his mind, he's saying, there's no way Elizabeth can use... Like, he's trying to be so analytical. He's like, no way Elizabeth can use chopsticks. I don't see them as a threat. And then they do, like, a cutaway gag to um, (laughs) Elizabeth making some origami. And then he just goes, like, (laughs) why is it so dexterous? (laughs) (laughs) And then there's a, the bit with Kagura, which is really great, is that she doesn't have any death note things until she sneezes on the meat. And then when she sneezes yeah. on the meat, she gets her big death note reveal, which she was actually yeah. playing them all along. Yeah, and it's just like looking down with the evil face. Yeah. <laughs> Saying, I was the winner. I am I am the <laughs> Nabe Shogun. <laughs> Oh, I like too when Katsura realizes that the meat's pork. He has like a breakdown. He does. <laughs> He's like crawling away in pain. He is. There's so many good bits here with them. It's it's such a good episode. <laughs> One of the funniest bits too is when um, Shinpachi does the the light thing where he like makes the move and then he's like, ha. All right, but wait, I miscalculated. Now that I've done this, I'm d- I have to wait for this and this to happen before. Yes, 100%. They do it with the whole back and forth because he's like, I have to spill it and then I'll offer to give him the, this specific thing and then I'll fill him up on that and then they'll be going for a second bowl. But then, oh, wait, no, I've messed up. And then it goes to Kentucky. He's like, he's messed up. Yeah. <laughs> so fucking good. This is, this is probably my favorite one so far. Just the way yeah. it's presented is fucking hilarious it really is i think for the the last batch of five episodes it was between uh for me personally it was between 24 and 25 and after talking it out it has to be 25 i forgot that the, the 25 itachi is bit. so fucking the itachi bit the itachi so bit good is what i fucking forgot completely about when the when bit. otose says it's pork that's before she gets involved in any of like the goofiness mm-hmm. and she She's like, oh, you guys had pork in a hot pot? And then it cuts to Kagura like, oh, and then it, it, the camera pans over to Kentucky and he just looks up with the Death Note face again. <laughs> and he starts giving the speech. Oh, man. <laughs> now I know what to be the the, 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 the photo for this video. It's just that face. <laughs> it's just the Death Note face. Oh, oh it's so fucking funny. Yeah, it's so good. It was... Fan fucking tastic, and it's actually apparently is uh not filler. It is chapter one hundred in the manga. <laughs> so that just lets you really know that they have their priorities straight in terms of what actually goes in the series. 
Um, oh my god, that's so fucking good. <laughs> yeah, it is. And uh, like I said, we mentioned it briefly, there is a new opening in ED. Uh, we'll talk about it more next uh, episode, just because I don't remember it enough. It's I don't only... remember it either. I, yeah. I, I just saw it on the one episode, and it was too long ago. Yeah, we'll talk about it. I will say that I will miss, I will miss Mr. Raindrop. I like. I like that. all of the endings. I really missed Fusengum when we moved on from that, and I've yeah. uh, Mr. Raindrop has grown on me too. So now I'm gonna miss do, that one do, too. Do, 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 away from me now. It's so like simple to just. It's very rare to hear an English theme, except for unless you're watching JoJo and they use a real ass song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so hearing it from there, it was like, oh yeah, and it kind of fits the overall tone of it too. Because also most EDs are usually like sad. This is where they put the sad song in. And then all the characters like run in towards something, but here it's just like, oh no, happy go lucky, Mister Raindrop, let's go, come walking away from me now, don't go away. So there we go. I wanted to talk about this. Thank you very much, everyone, for watching this point five episode. Uh, it was worth it. The long wait. I've waited th- at this point two and a half weeks to talk about episode twenty five. Was. <laughs> <laughs> Well worth totally it. Totally worth it. It's so fucking good. Yeah. I also feel like at some point we'll 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 maybe pencil it in at a late like when we're finished with something, either Yu-Gi-Oh! GX or this one, we probably have to go back to Death Note as well. Yeah, I can talk, watch Death Note. Talk, talking about that potato chip bit did remind me that damn that anime is really good. It's really good. <laughs> yeah, it's like, like play- the best part is when he bites it and it like freeze frames and there's like tiny salt bits and like crumbs flying out yes. in the freeze frame. So good. And then they have two of the most craziest uh, openings in the world with uh, the very mellow like, oh yeah, let's all this imagery in one. And then they have the second one, which is what up people, which is maybe a fever dream of an opening <laughs> if there was ever one put in anime. <laughs> oh my god i'm so excited for gx to start yeah i can't wait for gx either and i can't wait to also talk about more uh gintama next uh so gintama will continue on saturday as always we yeah we're not gonna to... stop gintama no, no we're, we're gonna not. do we're gonna, we're gonna go for five again but if for whatever reason if we're too busy we will at least try to do two because two is possible even over even under the most craziest of circumstances i think yeah, so, two is easy. That's like 40 minutes. Yeah, no problem. We will at least always try. Because someone actually did tell me that apparently the people who do this usually do two to three episodes. And I was like, damn, we were doing a lot of episodes at one point, if that's true. Yeah, ten, ten, well, because not only is 10 a lot to watch in that time frame, but it's also a lot to sit down and listen through. Yes, it is, actually. And we, uh, and that way, if it's actually a little bit shorter, we can give a little bit more time to specific <laughs> bits from it as well. Gives us a little bit more leeway. But either way, we will try and do five, but if we can't make five, two or three will be perfectly fine, and we will continue on forward, and we will continue until either the heat death or the universe, or we finish Gintama, whichever happens first. Chances are we will finish... <laughs> whichever comes first. Yes. <laughs> and then we will go on to uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! GX on Tuesdays, in which we will uh, go through that. Chances are it will be very easy for us to talk about Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, and I think there's only, like... I actually looked it up because I had to do research to explain to people what is Yu-Gi-Oh! GX for the people who don't know Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. And I think it is actually, I was like, oh, it shouldn't be that long, like 50 episodes a season. But it's actually, I think, the second longest spin-off manga. So, not spin-off manga, but of the spin-offs of like Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, Zexel, all of them, it is the longest <laughs> of those that is not the original Yu-Gi-Oh! So, <laughs> I think it's like 186 episodes or so. Aroundish? Uh, a GX. I'm pretty uh, sure. Let's see. It's four seasons, but I don't know how long a season is. Usually it was 180 episodes. episodes. 180? Okay. So yeah, uh, usually there's 50 episodes a season in Yu-Gi-Oh! Because I remember, because I was watching uh, five, uh, not five Ds. Um, how did I fucking forget what I was watching? The Pendulum Summon, Now You Feel the Power, Yu-Gi-Oh! Sakaki. How am I not remembering with the fucking name of it right now? Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5. Boom! Got it. <laughs> I got it eventually. So that one will take us a bit, but chances are we will finish Yu-Gi-Oh! GX before we finish Gintama. And because there's also a lot of other stuff to watch from Gintama as well. Like movies and stuff. Yeah, Gintama's huge. It is very huge. 
But yeah, we will continue on. Thank you very much for watching, and we will see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Goodbye. See ya. Yes, goodbye. We need to come up with an ending bit at some point. Maybe we should do it like if the beginning is previously on the next coming up. Actually, at that point, we're just doing kind of like a, a concession stand at that point. We may as well just take the I ending. I mean, from that's basically stand. what this is, yeah. It is, except for anime focused. Alright, we'll figure that out by next episode. <laughs> Look out for that. We'll be back, guys. Goodbye.